Hey everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Faraday shielding and Faraday cages. If you've seen my YouTube short or my TikTok, you've probably seen this before. Settle back in the mid 30s, the bulk of the mid to late afternoon, one to three inches in many areas, especially in the terrain to the north and west and southwest, and then slushy and wet through the day. Inland tonight, as we drop into the 20s, so it's okay, interesting. Precipitation. So we discussed a little bit, let me turn this off, um, in the YouTube short and on my TikTok, very briefly how this works. And now I want to go into a little bit deeper of a dive of the effect that's happening here. When I have a, a metal conductor, there's a couple important things we need to sort of get through fundamentally before we can get to the more complex explanation. Charges are always present. We have equal and opposite charges on this cage right now. Equal amount of positive, equal amount of negative. If I add any amount of positive or negative to this cage, because it's a metal, those charges can travel through the conductor. And so they can move anywhere they want on the cage. Okay, that's what's different from insulators. They also, like charges, also repel, right? They want to be as far away from each other as possible. So if I, for instance, simulate charges by showing these little tinsel pieces here, okay, when they get charged, they're going to repel each other. And I generate an electric field using this Van de Graaff generator, which I'll explain more in a video later. Okay, and maybe I'll move this away just a little bit because that actually touched. Do it again. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so what you'll notice here now is that I have this electric field that's around my conductor. And what that means is that the outside of this conductor is experiencing some shifting of charges. So, oh, I just ground a little bit. This Van de Graaff is a total positive charge. So that means all the negative charges on this cage have moved to the right side because they want to be near that. And the positives are all on the left side because they want to be away from that. But inside my conductor, nothing is actually happening. So it's being shielded from this electric field that's, that is outside. Let me ground the cage. And let's see if we can see. Well, let me ground this as well. There we go. Let's see if we can see that the inside is indeed not experiencing electric field. So what I can do is I can put my little Benjamin Franklin here, and he's got some tinsel on him. And if I turn this on, okay, what we're going to start to see here as this starts to build charge, woo, okay, he's clearly experiencing electric field, right? You can see that. We have tinsel going everywhere, flying around. Okay, I'm going to ground out my Benjamin. I'm going to place him inside my Faraday cage. And now hopefully we can see that tinsel through the cage. I'm going to turn this back on. Outside, we're getting all kinds of action. Inside, absolutely nothing's happening to his tinsel, right? Outside again, all kinds of stuff going on. Inside, nothing happening. Okay, so again, what's happening is all of the charge movement is happening outside. They want to be as far away from each other as possible. Nothing inside is happening. Now, this doesn't mean that this cage protects you from all types of EMF um, radiation. So for instance, you may have noticed that I put the radio on AM. So the question that I have is what happens if I put the radio on FM? Okay. So what's happening? Well, a couple different things. The frequency of the radiation matters, and that's going to depend on hole size. The finer the mesh is, the finer the, the smaller the holes are, the better it's going to be at being a Faraday cage. Okay, And AM and FM have different frequencies. So clearly, this is blocking the AM and not the FM. And also, signal strength is really important. Because there's this other thing that's kind of complex, but it's called skin depth. And the thicker your cage is, the better it's going to be at the, at the protection from the inside. So even if you had a completely solid metal cage with no holes and it was thin, there are certain powerful enough EMS pulses that are going to go through your cage. So to be really protected, you need a very finely meshed or solid walled Faraday cage, and it needs to be very thick if you want to have like sort of the ultimate EMF protection. Anyway, I hope that that helped clear up some of the questions that we had 
on the shorter video. This is my intention for these longer videos is to kind of go in a little bit more depth, a little bit more of a deeper dive into the physics of what's going on. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, and hopefully you're seeing a little bit that physics is fun. See you next time.